Hello everyone. In this video, we will be talking about window functions in R. A window function performs calculations over a set of rows and uses the information within individual rows when required. Some window functions can be compared to aggregate functions like sum, mean, etc. The key difference here is that a regular aggregate function takes n inputs and returns a single value, but a window function takes n inputs and returns n values. Types of window functions, ranking and ordering functions, offset functions, cumulative aggregates, rolling aggregates and recycled aggregates. We will cover window functions in two videos and this is part one. In this video, we'll be talking about ranking and ordering functions and offset functions. And we'll cover the remaining three types of window functions in part two. So let us create a data frame in order to demonstrate the different functions that we'll be discussing today. So here we have a student data set. We have three students, Rita, Brian and Alex and their marks in science and maths. We also have the date of enrollment of each of the students. Now let us first go to ranking and ordering functions. The ranking and ordering functions are available in the dplyr package. The first function we'll be discussing here is row number. The row number function is used to create an identification number or labeling each observation by a grouping variable. In order to demonstrate this, we have created student data, which is taking the student and date of enrollment from this data frame that we just created. So it's taking the distinct. So we have the three students and their corresponding dates of enrollment. We are creating an additional column ID using the mutate function and the output of ID is basically the output. The value of ID column is basically the output of this row number function. So we are arranging the student data based on the date of enrollment. So from oldest to newest date of enrollment. So student who joined first, that is Rita, is being given the ID 1. The next student is being given the ID 2 and the student to enroll last is being given ID 3, which is what the row number is returning within this window. So this is what the row number function is doing. It is basically helping create an identification number or labeling each observation within a group. The next function that we'll be talking about is min rank used for ranking each observation by a grouping variable. The min rank is similar to the rank function where the ties dot method is equal to min. So in R, we have the rank function. One of the parameters of the rank function is ties dot method. So let us demonstrate how ties dot method works and what is the difference between min rank and rank. So in order to demonstrate this, we'll be creating a vector. So this vector has four, uh, five data points. 11, 22 occurs twice, 33 and 44. And we'll be passing this vector through min rank, rank with ties method min and rank with ties method max. The ties method argument or parameter basically tells us how to handle a tie. So in, in this case, we have two occurrences of 22. So there's a tie. And so how will rank be assigned in this case? So for 11, the rank is one, it is the smallest number. So if we go in ascending order, 11 gets rank one. And then there is a tie between rank two and rank three. 33 is being given rank four and 44 is being given rank five. So let us see when ties dot method is min. So there is a debate whether the rank assigned as the output should be two or three, because there is a tie between the second and third positions. So ties dot method is equal to min assigns rank 2 as output and when we mention ties dot method as max so between ranks 2 and 3 3 is assigned to both these occurrences of 22 and the min rank function like we've mentioned here is similar to the rank function where ties dot method is equal to min so we can see the output of min rank and rank with ties dot method min is absolutely the same now let's use min rank function on the student data set so we see here that we have grouped by subject. So that is the window. And within each window, we are doing a min rank of descending marks. So basically, who has scored the top marks will be given rank one and so on and so forth. 
In case there is a tie in maths, we see that there is a tie in the marks of Rita and Brian, which is 92. Both of them have scored. So in this case, rank 1 is assigned to both of these students and Alex is assigned a rank of 3. So since min rank is similar to rank with ties method min, so we are seeing that if there is a debate between whether rank 1 or 2 will be assigned, then the lower number is selected. So rank 1 is being given here. Let us next go to the dense rank function. Dense rank function is also used for ranking each observation within a grouping variable. The only difference here is that there are no gaps between the ranks. So let us see what that means. So where the marks is same again here. So rank 1 is again being assigned. Alex here has scored 79 marks. And in, in case of min rank, we saw that there is a gap in the ranking. So when there was a tie between 1 and 2, the lower rank was selected. So 1, 1. And then the rank given to Alex was 3. In dense rank, there are no gaps between the rank. So after 1 is assigned to, to Rita and Ryan within this window, Alex is assigned a rank 2. The next function that we'll be talking about is percent rank. The percent rank returns relative rank or percentile of rows within a window partition. It is computed by rank of row within partition minus 1 divided by number of rows within partition minus 1. So let's demonstrate this. So we see here that for the window for the grouping uh, within science, we have Alex who has scored rank 1. So that is the rank within this partition 1 minus 1 divided by there are 3 rows within the partition of science. So 3 minus 1. So 0 by 3 minus 1 that is basically 0. Then Brian has rank 2. So 2 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1 is 0 0.5 and Rita has a rank 3. So 3 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. So the percent rank is 1. Here the, uh, for maths, since the marks for Rita and Brian is the same, both of them have secured a rank 1. So the output of percent rank would be 1 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. So 0 in both the cases. And Alex has rank 3. So 3 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. So it's 1 in this case. The next function we'll be talking about is cum underscore dist. Returns the cumulative distribution of values within a window partition. It is computed by cum underscore dist is equal to number of values up till x divided by n, where n is equal to total number of rows within the window partition. Now let's see what the output is. In this case, again, the grouping, the group by is using subject. So that is the window of partition. And we are get, taking the cumulative distribution of descending marks. So let's see. So within science, within this partition, what do we see? That Alex has the maximum marks, that is 90. And this is the only observation. This is the highest and only observation. So 1 divided by the total number of rows, that is 3, is 0 0.33. When we come to this data point, that is the marks is 86, there are two occurrences where marks is greater than or equal to 86. So 2 divided by 3, 0 0.66 and so on. For maths, we see that there are two Within the partition of maths, there are two occurrences of 92. So at each level, there are two cases within the given partition where the marks is greater than or equal to 92. So 2 divided by 3 will be the output in both these cases. And then at when the marks is 79, there are three cases within the partition where the marks is greater than or equal to 79. So 3 divided by 3 and the output will be 1. The next function that we'll discuss is n-tile. n-tile returns a course rank by dividing the data into n evenly sized buckets. n-tile is the only function here that takes two arguments. So the descending marks and the number of evenly sized buckets we want to divide the data into. So let's run this. So we see that uh, within science partition we see that there are only two possible buckets where we can divide the data. So 90 and 86 marks has been given a course ranking of 1. That is 90 and 86 have been bucketed into 1 and 78 has been bucketed into 2. 
So this is how the entire function works. It divides the data, it, the output is a coarse rank by dividing the data into n evenly sized buckets. Now let us compare each of these functions that we have discussed under the ranking and ordering functions. So we see that min rank in case of a tie, the lower value is uh, the rank where ties dot method is equal to min and there is a gap in the rank. So after one is assigned, then the next rank after one is assigned to these two to Rita and Ryan, the rank assigned for Alex is three. For dense rank, we see that there are no gaps in rank. For percent rank and cumulative distribution, we see that the output lies between zero and one. And entire is a coarse ranking method and it will divide the data based on the number of buckets. So within each of these window partitions, the data has been divided into two buckets. So these were the ranking and ordering functions under window functions. The next type of window functions that we will be discussing is offset functions. Under offset, we'll be discussing the lead and lag function. The lead function introduces an offset such that the returned value is the next value of the input variable. The syntax looks like this, lead x, which is the input variable of the data frame to introduce lead values in. Offset is basically the number of positions that the data will be offset by and default defines the value used for non-existent rows. So default value here is Na. Let us run this. So we see that where marks is the input variable, the output column LD that we are defining, there will be a lead by one. So in the input variable, 86 is the value in row two and that will become the value of the output in row one. And so there is a lead of one offset basically. And after 79, we have no value. So there is a non-existent row. So in that place, the output is Na. Similarly, let's see the lag function. The lag function introduces an offset such that the return value is the previous value of the input variable. So here the syntax is similar and X is the input variable of the data frame to introduce lagged values into. So if we run this, we see that we have introduced a lag. So the marks is the input data set and LG is the output data, uh, the marks is the input column and LG is the output column. So we see that there is a lag. So what the uh, value in row one in the input column is the value in row two in the output column and so on and so forth. And since there is no value before 78, an NA has been introduced here. So this is basically the two offset functions under window functions, lead and lag. Uh, so these are the two different types of window functions that we covered today. We'll be covering the remaining that is cumulative aggregates, rolling aggregates and recycled aggregates in part two. I hope you learned something new today and if you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.